Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss a particular aspect of Jacob Rees-Mogg's speech to the inaugural National Conservatism Conference where he attacked the government policy of photo ID as gerrymandering. Essentially, he's confessed to his part in trying to rig elections. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. Actually, I must start with this. I have described both the Democratic Conservative Organisation Conference, which took place on Saturday, and the National Conservatism Conference, which is taking place right now, and by the way, is funded by American money, so nothing really national about it, as loony conventions. It seems the man who attended and spoke at both agrees with me. As Jacob Rees-Mogg was speaking today, he was interrupted by a protester, and as the protester was being led away, apparently, Mogg said, uh, that he could have his National Lunar Convention next week. Was he implying that he was attending one of his own? But anyway, that's aside. There might be a few points of interest from this conference. I'm planning to discuss Braverman's speech tomorrow, because at the time of recording this, it hasn't actually happened yet. But Rhys Mogg made an incredibly interesting, incendiary almost, comment when he took to the stage this morning. In amongst what appeared to be a rambling speech, uh, complaining about Paul Dacre being turned down for a peerage again, ranting about the climb down over his retained EU law bill. He also said that the imposition of mandatory photo ID for elections was a gerrymander uh, gerrymandering scheme which uh, came suggested it came back to bite the Conservatives because it largely affected elderly people who are more likely to vote Tory. Now, for such a relatively short statement, there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, Jacob Rees-Mogg supported this law. His fingerprints are all over it. He voted for it. Yes, he was a government minister at the time, and not doing so would have meant having to leave the government and therefore not being able to pursue the retained EU law bill, which, which he's now raging about. You know, he may well make the argument that he wasn't really in favour of it personally. You know, he voted for it, but that's all there is to it. He voted for it. That means he did support it. And it's interesting to hear him take this line. See, he hasn't used his speech to say it was poorly implemented. He specifically called it gerrymandering. Now, onto that gerrymandering part. It's not gerrymandering. Jacob Rees-Mogg is dead wrong here. Gerrymandering is when you rig constituency boundaries. The Tories have been doing that as well. So Rees-Mogg is using completely the wrong word here but that's because he's not very bright. Don't be fooled by his posh accent and expensive schooling. The reason he likes to use a lot of obscure long words is because he knows he's not that bright and has therefore spent a lifetime developing this defense mechanism whereby he uses long, archaic words in an attempt to throw opponents off because they might not understand the words. He's basically like a posh version of Del Boy, trying to sound clever, Morge too. But regardless of the word he used, he was clearly alluding to a deliberate attempt by his party in government, a government he was a senior member of, to rig future elections. He was a, con he was a cabinet minister at the time that this legislation was being discussed at the highest level in government. So that means he was involved in those cabinet discussions taking place between the most senior members of the government of which he was one. For him to now describe it as uh, gerrymandering or whatever word he would have used if he understood what the words meant, is for him to say that the government of the time, which was led by his homie Boris Johnson, by the way, was deliberately trying to subvert democracy in their favour. He's also saying that whether he personally agreed with it or not, and he's been trying to downplay his own agreement with it recently, he was a party to the intended subversion. As a result, if he ever tries to wax lyrical with anyone about fundamental democratic rights again, they can bring this up as proof that he has admitted being a party to an attempt, a deliberate attempt, to deny people their democratic rights. But there's more to this statement. He specifically describes it as, a, as an attempt at gerrymandering, which sort of backfired because it hit more Tory voters. Now, the first thing to note here is... I don't think he has any way of knowing this, by the way. The government deliberately set the system up to make it virtually, if not actually, impossible to assess the scale of the problems caused by this new law. Because in theory, 
People running the polling stations were supposed to make a record of everyone that was turned away due to not having suitable photo ID. However, the government also arranged for officials to check for photo ID before even going into the polling station in the first place. So if you never actually made it inside the polling station, you weren't recorded. So if you were turned away, you're approaching there, someone says, have you got your photo ID? No, what? Oh, you need photo ID? Oh, I haven't got it. Oh, you have to go home, sorry. They don't get counted. If you're someone who heard about this in the news in the days leading up to the elections and you thought, I, I, I haven't got any ID and you didn't know how you could quickly get it from like Citizens Advice, I think, were, were, had a scheme. But if you weren't able to get that photo ID in time, you just wouldn't have gone at all. They're not counted. You know, so, so whatever records exist of the people turned away, and I'm not aware that they've even been compiled and analysed yet, it certainly haven't been published, it will be the tip of the iceberg. So whatever Rees Mogg is basing his assertion that it hurt Tory voters more than others on, it is not actual data. But then this is par for the course because he never bases anything that spews from his pie hole on actual data. So why is he saying it? It may be that he knows that the attempts to impose photo ID without making sure that everyone knew about the rule and were able to get the ID is backfiring. He may have some notion that there are a lot of people, including Conservative supporters, who are very upset about this. He may also be trying to use the usual Tory trick of playing the victim when they are in fact the aggressor. So that when others complain about the way it's disenfranchised voters, you know, the gullible who will have listened to Rees Mogg will simply reply, oh, I think you'll find, Phil, that it's actually hurt mostly Tory voters, so you don't have anything to complain about. They run this sort of tactic all the time. So much that it's just a reflex now. It's a variation on the theme of always accuse the other side of that which you are guilty. In this case, of course, the Tories are undeniably guilty of imposing this measure, but they're trying to claim that they're the victims and by extension that the other parties are the beneficiary. Um, but as I say, he has no way of knowing this. It is possible. Of course it is. I've said before these elections, it might make sense to suppose that this would impact poorer voters and therefore hurt Labour more, but it wasn't that straightforward. There's a lot of poorer voters support the Conservatives, as mad as that sounds, and they are less likely to make sure they're keeping themselves properly informed. The Tories invest a lot of effort into persuading their supporters to avoid being informed, ignore the experts. So the possibility certainly exists that this actually did hurt the Tories more, However, Rees Mogg can't possibly know because the data doesn't exist. And besides, he bases his claim on the fact that it hit mostly elderly voters. Did it? Might have done, but that's because mostly elderly voters take part in the local elections. But the list of suitable photo ID for specifically elderly voters was as long as your arm. Elderly voters had way more chance of having the right ID naturally than younger voters. The bottom line is that the government should, at the very least, have made sure that data on the impacts of photo ID was gathered properly so that a full investigation could come to an accurate conclusion. But so desperate were the Tories to pull every dirty trick they could that they made sure that this is now impossible. It may be that some Conservatives, including Rees Mogg, are concluding that it must have backfired purely because the results were worse than predicted. In the absence of actual data, okay, it's not the most ridiculous reasoning. However, there are other factors that could also be responsible for worse than predicted results. Not the least of which was Tory MPs too lazy to go out campaigning and a piss poor literal joke of a strategy being employed by a joke of a party chair. But there's a final dimension to Rees Mogg's statement as well. He says it backfired essentially because it hit more Tory voters. Now pay attention to that. He didn't say it backfired because so many eligible voters were turned away. The claim was that this new law would reduce voter fraud. That was why it was justified. This voter fraud, by the way, that was not happening in the first place. So the only way it could bite them is if it caused more eligible voters to be lost than fraudulent voters. That's, that's the only way it fails. Now, it did do this. I mean, it seems quite clear to me that more people were turned away during a single low turnout local election day than has committed voter fraud possibly for the last 100 years. But that's not what Rees Mogg said. The, he said it's backfired, it's bitten them back because it hit more Tory voters. Now, whether true or not, he's saying here that the success or failure of the scheme, 
whether it was what they wanted or whether it backfired, was to be measured by how well it supported the Conservatives, not how well it supported democracy. And so we come back to that main point of what Jacob Rees-Mogg was saying. The reason he's attacking voter ID is because it was supposed to help the Conservatives steal elections, rig elections, and he does not believe it has done so. More, he claims that he believes it has harmed them. And consider this was part of a speech intended for public consumption. It wasn't a quick reaction to an unexpected question from a journalist, nor was it a speech intended to be given to a hand-picked private audience that was leaked and not part of the plan. The words he spoke were words he wrote down, looked at, considered, thought about them more, maybe even amended them, and then finally decided these were the exact words he wanted to use on a public platform, knowing that it was going to be broadcast, knowing that these words would be reported beyond the lunatic convention he was speaking to. He wanted to say those words. He wanted to say that the scheme was designed to rig the election in favour of the Tories. He wanted to say that he's only upset that it did not do so. Now, why would that be? But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.